Right now at 11, an undercover video reveals hostile threats as a gateway man confronts his wife. I will kill any mother that tries to me. New at 11, friends rush to his defense claiming it was all a setup. They egged him on to a point to where he exploded. Caught on camera, the dramatic collapse of a bridge in Seattle. Why this footage proves a semi-driver is to blame. New at 11, freedom on the water. So many of us have got some problems and we, uh, this is freedom out here. A local organization helps veterans cope after combat. Plus, how your tweets can help power this new car. All right, folks, around 740 this evening, we have a uh, shot of a funnel cloud here that was near a Mockley. Thanks a lot, Raul, for sending this in. And you can see the distinct funnel cloud from the base of that cloud as it tried to hit the ground, but this did not. So this was not a tornado, just a funnel cloud. Obviously, no damage with it with this uh, funnel cloud as it stayed in the sky. You can see that it was the picture right around 740, right near a Mockley where this was taken. That was a pretty good thunderstorm as it was moving off to the south. Things a lot quieter now on SkyTracker Doppler HD. When I come back, we'll talk about a drier weekend ahead. All right, Scott, thank you. Topping the news at 11, new video from a hidden camera exposes the rage of Arthur Hohensi. The former New York officer is accused of shooting at his ex-wife and daughter and then setting his house on fire before killing himself. But close friends of two Hohensi claim the women actually set him up. Cor Lazar live in Gateway with exclusive reaction to that very dramatic video. Stacy, right now you can see the house that all of this took place in earlier this week is blocked off and completely boarded up. And tonight, those closest to Arthur Hohensi say that this video proves that he was set up by his wife and daughter. As one of Arthur's closest friends watches the hidden camera video, she sits unfazed. It doesn't change the way I know him at all. The video, apparently taken a year ago, was recorded by Arthur's ex-wife, Bonnie. Arthur is noticeably upset at even the hint of a divorce. It makes me angry. It makes me angry. Am I dangerous right now? Extremely. Extremely dangerous. When he got papers or when he would come from court, yeah, he would express himself. He was upset. But she says the behavior caught on camera is not the real Arthur. I think they provoked him like that. That, that video is a setup. In the video, Arthur threatened to kill, but hints of not wanting to harm his ex wife. No, kill any mother that tries to me. Dead simple. It doesn't mean you. We exclusively sat down with another one of Arthur's closest friends who refuses to believe Arthur was violent. When you watch this video. It surprised me, but then I thought, you know, who doesn't get in fights with their, their spouses? Anybody that's been in a relationship has said things that they didn't mean. But she says no matter what happened, she will always remember Arthur as a loving friend. I am going to miss him. I mean, he meant a lot to me and my two kids. Now, we also spoke to another one of Arthur's friends who says she was on the phone with him a couple of hours before he allegedly started shooting at his wife and daughter. And she says at the time he seemed perfectly normal. In Gateway, Corey Lazar, Wake News Now. Well, Corey, do we know how that fire was started in the house? Stacy, fire investigators were on the scene today and determined that Arthur actually intentionally set this fire, and he did that by lighting emergency flares in the attic. All right, Corey Lazar live in Gateway. Thank you. Just in at 11 o'clock, a road rage incident in Northport lands two men behind bars. Authorities say that fight started at River Road and US 41 Tuesday afternoon. That led to a threat, a chase, and then a shooting at El Prado Avenue and US 41. Port Myers resident Jason Atchison is accused of shooting at and hurting Brandon Nelson and his passenger. The Sarasota County Sheriff's Office says Atchison claims self-defense after Nelson pulled a gun on him. But because he chased Nelson down, deputies are now calling this shooting retaliation. Meanwhile, Lee County detectives are working to identify skeletal remains that were found near the Shell Point community. Someone was walking near Woodsong Lane when they made that discovery. Investigators are now working to figure out who the bones belong to, how old they are, and how the person died. Tonight at 11, family and friends of an Edison State College student found dead in a classroom are upset. They tell Wink News the medical examiner will not do an autopsy on 38-year-old Trisha Lynn Williams. The school claims she died of a medical condition, but loved ones say she didn't have any illnesses and they want an autopsy now. Williams was studying to become a teacher. What can we say about Lee, our hero? We are so proud of Lee. Your job is done. 
your, is over for your battle won. New developments at 11 on the gruesome murder of a British soldier in London. Today, Lee Rigby's family honored his heroic life. The soldier survived a tour in Afghanistan, but he died in broad daylight at the hands of two men. Authorities say the suspects ran him down with a car and then stabbed him to death. In a press conference, Lee's wife cried as she remembered her husband. I love Lee. They always will. And I'm proud to be his wife. The suspects claim the murder was revenge for the killing of Muslims abroad. British security services had both men as suspects on their radar. Authorities are now investigating why they were not considered a bigger threat. From Campaign Central, a new Quinnipiac poll in Iowa shows Hillary Clinton is the Democrat to beat in the 2016 presidential election. The survey shows the former Secretary of State with an 11-point lead over potential Republican rival Florida Senator Marco Rubio. And she has a four-point lead over Tea Party Senator Rand Paul. There's still no word, of course, that Clinton will run, but a super PAC recently started raising money for a possible campaign. Oklahoma's governor is releasing millions in state aid as residents and businesses in tornado ravaged more Oklahoma slowly get back on their feet. This all comes as the town held the second funeral for a child who died in that monster twister. As the grieving begins, families are starting to pick up the pieces in the hopes of rebuilding. Edward Lawrence has the recovery efforts and a very emotional reunion, all new at 11. Amy Lewis took off running and dove head first into a dog cage, overjoyed to find the family pet Bambi. <laughs> we went to the to Home Depot and then gave us sites to start looking for her. And we just happened to see that picture and it, it kind of looked like her, so we came over here to see. Bambi escaped when a fence on the Lewis's property was splintered in the tornado. She ended up here at this shelter with 100 other cats and dogs. We're still getting dogs and cats in every day. The animals are very stressed out and you feel so sorry for them. Streets and more are being reopened to residents and now those in the hardest hit areas can return without having to go through police checkpoints. While residents try to reclaim their own property, police are trying to prevent looters from taking what little is left. Officers have already made several arrests and more. It's very unfortunate and it really angers the police department uh, that someone would do that. So we will put every one of those people in jail. But Moore is also honoring its heroes. Amy Simpson, the principal of Plaza Towers Elementary School, said her teachers did everything they could to protect their students. The teachers covered themselves in debris while they were covering their babies. And I believe that's why so many of us survived that day. Seven children from Plaza Towers Elementary School died in the storm. Two were laid to rest Friday. In Moore, Oklahoma, Edward Lawrence, Wink News Now. Caught on camera at 11, the exact moment a bridge collapsed over the Skagit River outside of Seattle. We brought you the story as breaking news last night at 10 and 11. Watch the bridge. In the surveillance video, you can see one semi drive across the bridge. That's when a second semi passes by and hits part of the bridge. The bridge drops to the water below, taking several vehicles with it. It's off to the left of the screen there. Developing tonight, federal transportation officials are now searching the country for a possible replacement for that bridge. The span is one of the main arteries from Washington into Canada, and right now, of course, it's closed. But officials are hoping to find a temporary fix within a couple of weeks. Meanwhile, a college student whose truck collapsed with that bridge shared his horror story of the incident. There's just like a huge explosion in front of me and the ground on the bridge is falling into the water and and you know my first reaction is you know this this has to be a dream. 20 year old Bryce Kenning was on his way to a hockey game when his routine drive turned into a nightmare. He tried opening his door and kicking out the windshield before he escaped through the passenger side door. On the money at 11 o'clock, families hitting the open roads this weekend to celebrate the holiday weekend, Memorial Day, of course. Even though prices are on the rise this spring, drivers are spending the same amount of money now as they did last year. Right now, the national average for a gallon of regular gas is 365. Here in Southwest Florida, paying 354 on average. Oh, we can afford the gas. You know, as parents, it's all we can do to feed our kids. And in this economy, prices should be going down, not up. I'm actually going up to North Florida to River Ranch to go uh, play in the mud for the weekend, so I'm probably about to go blow a whole tank on spinning around doing donuts, but it's expected. 
Well, experts say prices could drift lower after the holiday, but hurricane season could force more hikes throughout the summer. There's a big disconnect between the military and the U.S. Um, the military goes to war and the U.S. Um, you know, continues to watch their favorite shows on TV. New at 11, giving back to heroes this Memorial Day, how a trip on the water is helping troops recover from war. Plus, alcohol swap. New at 11, an undercover operation reveals bars and restaurants serving rubbing alcohol instead of real booze. And three, two, one, lift off. A rocket launch leaves behind a streak over southwest Florida. New at 11, as we head into the Memorial Day weekend, local veterans reveal the realities of war never go away once they come home. But there is one local group taking a different approach to helping veterans cope after combat. Colby Robertson is in Naples to explain how. For Bob Bodeman, Memorial Day is not an easy time. I think of the people that went over there with me didn't come back. You know, and... Uh, the people that came back and didn't really come back. The Vietnam veteran has been home for more than 40 years, but his experience in combat has never left him. So many of us have got some problems and we, uh, this is freedom out here. Out here is the water, a place where Bob and other veterans say they can open up and just be free. It rebuilds our, our ability to communicate with others. These veterans spent time on this 55-foot yacht, all thanks to the Freedom Waters Foundation, a local nonprofit that uses boating as a means of therapy. It helps because civilians are saying, hey, we care about you. Greg Cintron is an Iraq War veteran and counselor. He says many veterans return home feeling broken and disconnected, but water therapy helps them open up. It really helps it. You know, in so many, for so many years, myself included, we were Mr. Macho, you know, so we wouldn't say there was any problems. We had them, but they were demons locked inside us. Colby Robertson, Wink News Now. Well, Freedom Waters also does therapeutic boating, including sailing and fishing trips for people with disabilities, special needs, and other life-threatening illnesses. We have more information on winknews.com. Meanwhile, though, new tonight, a warning this Memorial Day weekend. Crooks are targeting those willing to give to veterans and even military personnel themselves. The Better Business Bureau says thieves can offer loans and benefit buyout plans as ways to steal money. They also post fake properties for rent or offer up a bogus car for sale, hoping to lure a military family to give up their hard-earned cash. Cash. Many of the scams involve paying a fee or giving up your personal information up front. Well, while most of us saw a lot of nice weather in our area, we want to take you back to this new video that was sent to the Wink Newsroom tonight. A funnel cloud dropping from the sky in Immokalee. Several other Wink News viewers sent us pictures as well. So your Scott's joining us now to talk mm -hmm. about the severe weather threat. Is it over for this area? Uh, yeah, you know, this was an isolated incident. Mm -hmm. We didn't even have that much rain today, but we had a few little thunderstorms some uh, in some of our uh, inland communities, and that was one that actually formed up uh, near the Port Charlotte area, mm -hmm. kind of worked its way uh, through Lehigh Acres, eventually down into Immokalee, but uh, it wasn't, uh, it didn't hit the ground, so it wasn't a tornado, no damage, just a pretty cool picture up there, and it lasted maybe a couple minutes or so as it uh, dropped from the uh, low clouds there, but there you go, there's Sky Tracker Doppler HD, uh, severe weather threat will be over as that cold front is pushing through. We'll not see any severe weather overnight, and tomorrow, even into Sunday and Monday, looking uh, fairly dry across the region and low relative humidity. There's Sky Tracker Doppler HD, and I took this back about six hours or so ago, and you can see where that thunderstorm kind of formed near the Port Charlotte, Punta Gorda area in DeSoto County through Charlotte County. Then it kind of popped up in Lehigh Acres, and there was that cell that just passed to the south of Immokalee. That was right around 740 this evening, so that was the thunderstorm we were tracking as it moved its way down. Now things a lot quieter on the radar. A few uh, spotty showers left over in the Everglades heading toward Alligator Alley, but that's really about it. Things are going to start drying out overnight. There's the water vapor imagery. There is the dry air behind the cold front that's working its way through the uh, center of the state now, and we do expect that to continue to work through the area eventually to our south by tomorrow. Temperature 
temperature is still on the warm side, upper 70s right now, 78 degrees currently in Fort Myers. Here's the big picture, upper level low spinning over New England, uh, kind of some soggy weather for those folks for the uh, weekend. Looking at some rain in the middle part of the country as well, but that cold front, as I mentioned, working through central Florida, eventually through southwest Florida here overnight. By tomorrow, more of a northeasterly breeze. It'll be a mostly sunny day. It will be a little breezy from time to time. Northeasterly breeze, 15 to 20 miles an hour. You boaters, if you're heading out tomorrow, it will be a little breezy, so we'll see uh, pretty choppy conditions in the bays. The Gulf, anywhere from 2 to 4 feet. Water temperature 84 degrees and small craft uh, use caution as it will be a little bumpy out in the open waters. A clear sky tonight and a nice full moon above. Check it out. We'll see temperatures in the upper 60s and low 70s across the region. Mostly sunny and breezy once again tomorrow for your Saturday. We'll see highs though, even though a cold front, a weak cold front is moving through, we'll still see high temperatures in the low 90s as we'll see plenty of sun. And usually that dry air uh, heats up a little quicker and that's exactly what's gonna happen tomorrow as well as Sunday, lower humidity with us. And then by Monday, a return of a few afternoon and evening storms. We have breaking news right now. A disturbance call at Gulf Coast Town Center turns into a high-speed pursuit that spanned two counties. Yeah, we are learning that the getaway car crashed on Golden Gate Parkway east of I-75 in Collier. That's where Colby Robertson is live with more breaking details. Colby? This is a very, very active scene right now. I'm going to step out of the way so my photographer can show you what we can see here. You can see the car right there. It appears it was caught on fire. There are Lee County Sheriff's deputies here as well. There is crime tape up. Call your county sheriff's deputies are here. The Golden Gate Fire Department also here. Uh, we are at Golden Gate Parkway and Coronado. Coronado is still currently shut down. Traffic is being rerouted. Collier County Sheriff's deputies tell me that two people were taken to the hospital with non-life threatening injuries. Again, you can see the car here. Looks like it caught on fire. Again, this all started as a disturbance at Gulf Coast Town Center. The suspects took off down I-75 and ended up here in Golden Gate. We'll continue to keep you updated as we learn new information. For now, we are live in Golden Gate. Colby Robertson, Wink News Now. All right, we're waiting for more information. Thanks, Colby. Just in at 11 o'clock footage of a military sea, uh, satellite launch, the unmanned Delta IV rocket lifted off from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station earlier tonight. There's a chance if you had your eye on the skies in southwest Florida, you saw that streak it left behind. A Cape Coral police officer posted this picture of the trail that you can see it right above if you look at the power lines. New on Wink tonight, an undercover operation turns up some startling results about the liquor served in New Jersey bars and restaurants. Authorities caught 29 businesses charging premium prices for fake or cheaper quality booze. But what's more shocking here at one bar, workers sold rubbing alcohol mixed with caramel coloring a scotch. 13 TGI Friday's restaurants were busted. The restaurant chain is now investigating. So this whole story about you blame Kate for making your daughter gay. Where did that come from? I don't know. You tell me. It didn't come from us because that's not how we feel. It was never said and that's why we feel that we had to tell how we felt. Well, right now at 11, a Florida mother and her father are defending their decision to file sex battery charges against their daughter's former girlfriend. Jim and Lori Smith say they had no choice but to go to the law about 18-year-old Kate Hunt. They say their daughter was just 14 and Kate was 18 when the two girls started a sexual relationship. The Smiths say their daughter is being unfairly prosecuted as the community labeled their parents gay bashers and they wanted to set the record straight. New video at 11 of a car running on some very unconventional power. Missouri engineering students rebuilt an old Volkswagen to run off of social media. Social media being used to power a car that they built is just so perfect. So here's how that works. Every tweet, Facebook like, and Instagram share and follow adds to the server in the car. If the vehicle doesn't have enough social media buzz, a little black box cuts power to the electric engine. 
Students plan to drive their creation to Washington, D.C. to lobby lawmakers for more hands-on education. Just remember, you cannot fuel your own car. Right. <laughs> no only, tweeting behind the wheel to only, get your juice going. If only. I'd be more than happy to give somebody a quarter mile of gas right now with tweets of this basketball game. Right. Eastern Conference Finals, oh my goodness, they are picking up right where they left off in Game 1. We'll have the latest details on that. Plus, the Red Sox, they drop two starters down to the DL. Could the moves equal a win for them? And the Twins flirt with being no hit in Detroit. Wing Sports is next. Well, things transitioned into Game 2 of the Heat and Pacers Conference Finals just as chippy as they ended in Game 1. And just like in Game 1, the Pacers took a halftime lead, a close one into the fourth. As it is uh, right now, the Pacers up 97-93 with one second left. LeBron James 36 points, Roy Hibbert 29. Now the Boston Red Sox, they made a handful of moves just before this weekend's games. The team placed outfielder Shane Victorino and third baseman Will Middlebrooks on the disabled list. Victorino sat out the past three games, while Middlebrooks has been 0 for his past 11 at the plate. And a look around the league, John Lackey gets Boston a win at home. They're 14th on the year. Uh, they beat Cleveland. The Yankees, they got up early and they roughed up the Rays. They held the lead all the way through. Meanwhile, pitcher Annabelle Sanchez threw a no-hitter for the Marlins back in 2006. He flirted with one tonight as the Tigers hosted the Twins. 12 strikeouts, three walks into the ninth, a no-hitter. That is until who else? Mr. Maurer, Joe, the man of the Twins, knocks it into center field. Not a no-no, but Sanchez does get the win. More baseball news. The FGCU Eagles, they get eliminated from Atlantic Sun tournament play. The men wrapped up their elimination mashup with uh, Lipscomb this morning after a 14-hour rain delay. Second seeded Eagles, they head back to Southwest Florida, ending the season 37 and 20. Round two of the Senior PGA Championships over in Missouri, and on the 14th here, Tom Watson gets the putter to work for him. He, birdie would bring him to two under par. And then on the 13th, Duffy Waldorf uses a great read here on the green and drops a birdie of his own. Four under for him, Russ Cochran, and Kenny Perry are tied at the lead for seven under. Second round of the Crown Plaza Invitational and the approach shot here on seven by Jordan Spieth and a good roll for him. He would get birdie and finish eight under par. That's two shots behind this man, Matt Kuchar, who here on the second hits it right in the hole, bounces right on out. Kuchar would eventually tap in for birdie, a 15 under uh, par uh, round for him so far. He would have to finish and wait till tomorrow. Play was suspended <laughs> due to darkness. But how often do you get to see that? I have not, It's hard enough for me to get it in six shots, let alone right, right there right. and make a dent in the hole. Right. There you go. Good thing they're making it perfect again. You have to. It's got to be perfect all the way. They get finicky, those guys. All right. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> we'll be right back. Look at this new picture just into the Wink newsroom. It's an alligator that was hit by a car at Surfside and Veterans. Cape officers say the gator did some front end damage. The driver, though, didn't hang around to find out more. Don't blame him. See you later.